Joining us now is a congressional candidate for Texas's 31st district, Dr. Christine Mann. Welcome to the Damage Report. Hi, how are you? Thanks for having me. Uh, glad to have you on. Uh, glad to learn more about this race, which is uh, which is an interesting one. Uh, now, for background, you you ran in the last election, uh, in the primary election, I should say, and um, the the person who ultimately won that election went on to go against the Republican and was unsuccessful. Uh, leaving us where we are today with a, a primary with six, uh, seven candidates, I should say, as of right now. Tell me a little bit about how this race is shaping up. Well, we're up to 10 candidates now. Oh, is it 10 now? <laughs> yes, there have been a few more who have filed recently. Um, yes, so that's correct. I did run last time. I made it into the runoff with MJ Hagar, who was the ultimate ultimately the Democratic nominee. And because she's now running for Senate, uh, I'm the person who was next in line with her in terms of um, uh, grassroots um, activism and with uh, building coalitions. And so we've got all of those things already in place on my team. And so we feel really good about the election right now. We've been on the ground working for almost three years. So we're basically building on what we built last time and we're going to take it into the general uh, after I win the primary. So uh, I, I think as we've seen uh, on most of the Democratic, uh, the presidential uh, debate nights, when there are 10 people jostling for attention, it can be difficult to sort of stand out. So what would you say amongst all of those different competitors, which probably have a wide range of different ideologies and policy preferences and backgrounds and all of that, um, what is the sort of core identifier? What is the, what is the identity for, for your candidacy? For me, it's that I've been doing this kind of work for a while. I have not held a public office, but I have been working in uh, politics, working for other candidates, working on other campaigns. I've helped get other Democrats elected in my district. Uh, I've been a community activist for years. Um, I've been doing this kind of work for a long time, and uh, we have several candidates who are new to politics, and I applaud them jumping in. But this is a race that's going to need someone who has that background, who, who knows how to run a campaign of this size, who has already built the networks that we need to flip this district. So you have a background uh, as a doctor, and um, that's already at the national level one of the big issues of uh, this uh, brewing presidential race. Um, where do you stand in terms of uh, what needs to happen with uh, US uh, healthcare and insurance? Well, I've been advocating for universal health care with a single payer system since 2009. I first started talking about it back when it was very unpopular with uh, with most people, when it was unpopular with doctors. Uh, and I testified to the Texas Medical Association as a physician, as a patient, as a patient advocate in favor of a system that leaves no one behind. Uh, with my 20 years in practice, I am really tired of seeing the, the problems that arise. Uh, I have patients who cannot access care. They come in when they finally get insurance. We are behind on their diabetes. We're behind on their high blood pressure. So uh, my red line is um, I will only advocate and only support plans that lead to universal health care. So there are of course a number of different ways that you could get there. And nationally, we have some people who are advocating for Medicare for all, some for saying we need to expand the ACA so that it covers everyone, perhaps a public option. Um, do, which would you say you line up most closely with? I'm most closely with Medicare for all single payer type system because there is so much money to be saved by doing that. And we can reinvest that money into getting good treatment for people. We can reinvest that money into innovations in healthcare. So uh, single payer is the most efficient, uh, most cost effective, and the one that will guarantee coverage. I, I believe people should be covered from birth to death. Um, and some of these other ideas cannot give you that um, that reassurance that you will always have coverage no matter what your circumstances. Uh, with uh, at 10 and possibly more eventually uh, candidates in the primary where the National Democratic Party comes down will, will matter at least somewhat. So has there been any contact with the DNC or the DCCC so far? We are um, having conversations with everybody right now, the DCCC, the PCCC, um, Emily's List. You know, We talk to everybody because I want to be a representative for everybody, whether you are a more centrist Democrat or a more liberal Democrat. Uh, we, we talk to everybody and we'll continue to talk to everybody. So yeah, we have those conversations, but um, I'm on record. I've been on record for a very long time about where I stand on these issues. And 
Uh, I'm not going to be um, influenced just because someone at the top of the ticket has a different idea than me. I'm going to continue to advocate for what I know is right and what I believe to be the best solutions. So you're looking to enter uh, the US House, which the Democrats uh, currently control, although the Republicans have held on to the Senate. And there is still a very good chance uh, that if uh, you were to succeed, the Republicans would maintain control of the Senate, which would make passing legislation significantly more difficult. If you were to be sworn in and you were looking at a two year span where actual legislation would be difficult to get passed, how would you spend your time to make sure that, that for your uh, constituents back home, it mattered that you entered uh, you know, the halls of Congress, even if you can't get much passed legislatively? I think that step one is you have to continue to advocate and say what you believe. You can move the needle, even if you can't pass legislation. The more people that talk about these issues and the more people who get on board with supporting things like universal health care and a $15 minimum wage, um, you the more you talk about it, the more the public starts to buy into it. And I'll tell you what, I spend all day talking to people about healthcare. This isn't a new discussion for me. I've had patient discussions for years about why I believe in this system and why I believe that these are the right changes to make. And it's the same thing once I get into Congress. Uh, I continue to make those uh, those um, connections and have those discussions. I, I laughingly tell people all the time, I've been talking people into getting colonoscopies for 20 years. So I'm used to talking to people who uh, don't wanna do what I want them to do and, and learning to find ways to convince them to do the things that they don't want to do. So I'm going to take that 20 years of experience and, and keep talking to people. Uh, that is a metaphor I have not heard in politics before, <laughs> not stated that way anyway. Uh, but moving to another issue area, back in June, you were actually uh, attacked in a press release by the Republican National Congressional Committee when you agreed with Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, uh, her portrayal of the uh, network of detention centers uh, along the border and throughout the country as uh, concentration camps. Um, what do you think about that issue where it stands right now? What, what do you advocate for uh, having uh, done? She was absolutely correct. They are concentration camps. And I'll tell you what, I just got back last month from a week at the border. I went to Laredo to volunteer as a physician at a clinic and shelter. And while I was there, the MPP policy started to really be enforced. And we noticed that fewer and fewer people were coming to the shelter. So I traveled into Nuevo Laredo to look for the missing migrants and find out what was happening to them on the other side of the border. And what I saw was horrific. Um, it's so much worse in person than what you see on the news. We found children sleeping under um, overpasses, uh, sleeping on pizza boxes, <clears throat> people who are being sent on bus rides 22 hours away, still trying to find out how they were going to get back to Laredo for their um, asylum hearings. And it, it was horrible. This policy needs to be stopped. These are concentration camps by any stretch of the imagination, by any definition that you use, um, and they need to be stopped. Uh, I, I'm adamant on that. The NRCC can continue to attack me all they want to. Um, I'm not backing down on that. And uh, where can our viewers uh, find out more about where you stand on the issues? Uh, so my website is Christine the number four congress.com Christine for congress.com um, and there are links to be able to get in touch with me I answer a lot of people's uh, texts and, and emails and um, uh, private messages myself um, I, I leave my private phone number on people's phones when I call them I believe in being accessible uh, and I would love people to reach out to me okay uh, dr. Mann, thank you for joining us today thank you for having me For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.